think I got this done about as good as I'm going to get it. I did all the rest of the machine you wanted this morning. And uh, I got it up and running. I cut this piece with it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take some pictures of that thing there. It's got some run out in it. And I think I figured it out while I was editing. I saw uh, some run out where uh, this thrust bearing, one diameter is smaller. And I made the journal to fit that diameter. And I noticed that that diameter is running out. And it gave me a little wobble. So I just need to pull it back apart and uh, fix that up. I think it's going to work great for what I want. So um, I got fi I filmed everything so I'm going to go ahead and put that up now and uh, and then uh, I'll post the pictures of this at the end of it. Okay. Alright, looks like I need eight thousands more. Okay, that's good. Alright, that's what I wanted. And that's what I got.
so I got it on there and I got the indicator mounted to it let's see if I can turn it around so you can see it hopefully there's not too much glare on I got the indicator zeroed so when I push this up without without any pressure 26 but when I I can put pressure to take it up to about 28 so I'm gonna probably take I'm gonna take 25 Is that on zero day? Yeah, well, it's a, maybe it's starting out at a half. Yeah. I'm going to take 25 off of it and see what that does. Alrighty. Let me take the indicator back off. Okay. Nice if I had somewhere I could stick it so it doesn't have to be undone. There we go. Now, the problem is getting it back off. I didn't want to damage it, but the hex is going to be cut on there anyway. So. Take her apart. I wanted them threads good and tight. By God, I got them good and tight. not too bad. I mean, they're going to loosen up in time. All right. Take off the thrust bearing housing. Get out of there. Right, this way so it doesn't fall. 25 thousandths has to come off of this face here. Let's order back up and take it off of it. Put it back up. And I took off what I consider to be 25. I really should have miked it first. I don't know why I didn't think of that. But let's see what we got now. Pushing in. Dump shaft in. Turn that one out upside down. Hope it don't fall over. You know, I got it too tight. I figured I would. I don't think it's anything a little lower on it right now. Maybe I'll just put it up there and let it run a while. See what happens. So let's oil it and run it around by hand for a little while. That's not hot. Getting a little warm down in there. Might not be enough oil down in there. Got the thing up in there and I took a little tiny cut here on the end and it looks pretty good. There's a lot of run out in it but that can be taken care of. Uh, the main thing is so that it can't fall out and hurt you. So 
what I plan to do is I got a 3 16 end mill in there. I'm going to run one cut down as a, like a keyway cut and then I'm going to I think what I'm going to do is just take a clean up cut across the back of here and see what kind of quality we get. We get a lot of rough finish and out of parallel and everything so let's just see what happens. be on to something I don't know I wasn't I wasn't too hopeful there for a while let me take it out see what I got did get a groove cut in it yeah. Take it over the table and examine it a little bit. It's hard to see here. And I'll, I'll have to knock some of these burrs off too with a razor knife. Well, all in all, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, you know, this 3 sixteenths. This is a 3 sixteenths bar here, 3 sixteenths thick. It goes down in there, but you have to force it. It's a. That's pretty nice. Everything I checked, everything and nice and square. That I can still see. It milled three sixteenths by three sixteenths thick or deep, and it looks. I'll take some pictures of it, but. Nice and nice and straight. This is where I went along the edge. I don't. I'm not real happy with the finish on that. It's a little rough. Actually, it's kind of neat looking. So it's a. It looks like a wood grain texture. But uh, as far as straight, it it's just it's straight, straight as it could be. Yeah, this back side is. The groove was cut, I cut a groove uh, off center, and the thickness of the back is, let's see, I'd say 60. Let me get the veneers and check it, calipers and check it. 
52, 50, yeah, 52, 55 now on one end. Now I just eyeballed this, so this said this wouldn't be the tool's fault. 60 on this end. But when I put the vise in, I just I, I just ran the mill down and eyeballed it. Um, but these should be accurate because I this side was milled when I cut the groove, and this side was milled when I cut the face. So let's see what that looks like. 187, 187 and a half on this end. That's a coincidence because I didn't try to hit that. 187 on that end. It's this perfect. One ninety four in the middle. Oh, okay. I see what was happening because the ends were sticking over the vise. They were flexing. It was flexing a little bit. Huh. Yeah, I'm not totally disappointed with that. There was a lot of run out. But I can I can improve that over time. Like I say, if I get the uh, ER32 collet holder with the M2 taper, MT2 taper, um, that'll that'll true that up a lot. And then I can get a stub to go in there, three quarter inch, the six inch shaft that I think it holds the bottom. Then would hold an ER15 collet setup. And I think you take just about all of that out of there. All I would need at the bottom is some kind of small support bearing. And uh, I don't think I could actually make that adjustable. Yeah, that would be that would be great. But I'm I'm kind of happy with this. I, for what I do, I may never make any improvements to it at all. It's going to do what I wanted, and I don't think it's going to cut metal too good. Maybe I'll play around with this some more. Um, with some aluminum in there, but that'll have to be another day. Got my tires. The tires came today. Four ply. Got them from Walmart for twenty-seven dollars a piece. Floor ply, four ply rating. So I'm going to put those on the tractor, and I'll probably run the tractor around a little bit with the mulcher, with the mulcher plate in the tractor, and grind up some of these leaves. And then I'm going to pull the deck off and go ahead and start putting on the uh, snow blower. I'm thinking we might get some snow this year, but you know, <laughs> there's no way of knowing that. Well, things like that are piling up, so I can't fool around with that drill press forever. So I got to get on these other jobs. All right. Well, I hope uh, I hope it was interesting for you to see me, see that thing being made. Maybe give you some ideas. I don't know. It's. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.